Right, great hands. This is the last lesson in your revision for your test week. Um, please make sure that you're going to go through it. This is on trigonometry and the trigonometry you've learned so far. So remember that we've got Sakatoa. So Sakatoa stands for sine theta. Opposite is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cos theta stands for A adjacent over the hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So if we look at this little triangle that we've got here and we see that we've got theta, let's just fill in these letters. So the opposite side to theta is going to be B, so this will be opposite. The adjacent side is the side that is next to the angle that's not the hypotenuse. So therefore this is the adjacent and then obviously this is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So we want the opposite of the hypotenuse which in this case is going to be B over A. The adjacent over the hypotenuse, here is the adjacent which is C over the hypotenuse which is A, so that's going to be C over A. And the opposite over the adjacent is going to be B over C. And obviously these letters change, you can't learn that, but you must know Sokotoa if you want to do trig in right angle triangles successfully. Right, so now it says find the value without the use of a calculator and what they want us to do is know our special triangles. So there are two special triangles you should have learnt about and know and I know that you do. The first one is that it's 45 degrees and 45 degrees and it's going to be 1, 1, root 2. And the second special triangle is your 60, 30 triangle where this is 60 degrees, 30, this is 30 degrees, this is 2, 1 and root 3. And if you don't remember them, please go learn them. And like I say every time, if you don't really understand what I'm doing, because I am doing fast, this fast because it's revision, go back to the the, the weeks where I'm teaching you this stuff and I've done it very slowly. So please go through it. And remember that we've got Sakadoa. Okay. So sine 45 times cos 45. Sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's just choose this bottom 45 degrees, it really doesn't matter. The opposite is 1 and the hypotenuse is root 2. So we've got 1 over root 2 times by cos of 45 which is adjacent over hypotenuse which is 1 over root 2. 1 times 1 is 1 over root 2 times root 2 is just 2. Okay, nice and easy. Let's do this one. Cos 60 plus tan 45. Cos of 60, we're looking at this triangle. Cos of 60, there's your 60. Cos is adjacent over our partner, so it's 1 over 2, so it's 1 over 2. Tan of 45 is opposite over adjacent, so it's opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 1 which is just going to be one and a half, or if you like, you can write it as three over two, it makes a difference. Right, sine 60 minus cos 60. So sine 60 is opposite of our partners. So it's root, root three over two minus cos 60, which is adjacent of our partners, which is going to be one over two. And all you do is write that as a nice, common factor, so it's root 3 minus 1, and we leave it like this because it says use without the, without the use of a calculator. Right, so let's do an example. It says write down two ratios for each of the following ter in terms of the sides A, B, B, C, B, D, A, D, D, C, or A, C. So we're going to do so and it says sine B, sine B. So they've quite been tricky here because they said write down two ratios for each of the following. But the reason is that there is the small right angle triangle here and then there's the big one over here. So I'm actually going to draw this one in purple and then we'll worry and then there's the small one over here and then there's the big one. So let's look at the purple one first. It says sine B. So sine B, if this is the angle B, 
then this side here is opposite for it. This is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. And it says sine is opposite over hypotenuse. It's CA over the hypotenuse of BA. So it's going to be CA over the hypotenuse of BA. Right. Or you can see that angle B is part of this really big triangle here in which case this whole side here is the opposite, this whole side here is the adjacent, and this whole side here is the hypotenuse. And again they want sine of B, so sine of B is going to be the opposite of the hypotenuse, which is going to be AD over BD. Right, do you understand? Right, now let's look at cos of D and I'm going to erase the stuff I drew on the triangle just so that we can see and make it easier for ourselves. So cos D, so again we've got that this little right angle triangle here as well as the big one. Okay, so cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is D, this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle triangle. So they want the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the first one, D, we can say is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be CD all over AD. Right. Okay, now there's another triangle. It's the big one. So again, we're looking at this really big triangle. And looking at D. And again, we're looking at the adjacent side. But this time, the adjacent side is this side. Okay, why? Because here's our right angle. So the whole of this is actually the hypotenuse and then this is the opposite. Okay, so cos is adjacent to hypotenuse. The adjacent in this case is going to be AD all over the hypotenuse of BD. So this isn't interesting that over here sine of beta or B is AD over BD and yeah cos of D is AD over BD which we kind of knew because of the co-ratio thing actually I don't think you've learned the co-ratio thing yet. Finally let's do tan of B but I need to delete some stuff and we want tan of B. Tan of B is opposite of adjacent and again we're looking at this red triangle here first where this is the adjacent side and this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. So tan of opposite over adjacent, tan of beta is opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be AC over BC, AC over BC. Or we could be looking at this really big triangle, in which case this is the opposite this is the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse and again we want opposite over adjacent so it's going to be equal to AD over AB AD over AB okay so I hope you now can see how to use your trig ratios right now let's determine the angle correct to one decimal place and this you just need to know how to use your calculators so let's whip out the calculator and this is a emulator, which means it kind of looks more or less the same as most of your calculators out there. Might not look exactly the same, but it's close to it. Please make sure that there is a somewhere on your screen this capital D, because that really shows you that you are working in decimals. The last thing you want to do is be working in radians when you are doing your trig graphs. Okay. So it says tan theta is equal to 1.7. So what we really want to do is get the inverse of tan. And if you look up here, Yari's tan, and if you look very carefully, there's a tan to the negative 1. So we need to get to that tan to the negative 1. So we're going to go shift tan, and then we just put input in 1.7 and close the bracket. 
and we end up with 59.53. So theta therefore is equal to 59.13 degrees. Nice and easy, hey? This time we've got sine beta plus 2 is 2.65. So the first thing we need to do is solve for the whole of this sine beta. So we go sine of beta is equal to 2.65 minus 2. Therefore, sine beta is equal to 0.65. And then again, we have to get out the calculator. And when we do this, we go again, we want the angle. So then if we go shift sine of 0.65, close the bracket, and we end up with 40.54. So therefore, beta is equal to 40,54 degrees. Then we've got tan beta is equal to 1, or 3 tan beta is equal to 1. So what do we have to do? We have to isolate the tan beta. To do that, we need to divide both sides by 3. So we've got tan beta is equal to a third. So now we need our calculator again. In order to get the angle, you always use the shift. So we're going to go shift tan, and then it's 1 over 3, so it's 1 over 3 close your brackets equals and you get 18.43 degrees so therefore beta in this case is 18.43 degrees please note I'm rounding off to the second decimal place and you need to do that in these examples right let's do a problem it says from a distance of 300 meters Susan looks up at the top of a lighthouse the angle of elevation is 5 degrees determine the height of the lighthouse to the nearest meter okay so here is my horribly drawn lighthouse. Okay, it looks like a little bit of a tower, but there's the light coming out, and there's it on a rock in the middle of the water. Okay, and here is land, and here is Susan standing on the land. Yes, I know, horrible drawing. And she looks up at the top of this, okay, at a distance of 300 meters and her angle of elevation is 5 degrees and they want to know what is the height what is the height so we know that we've got a right angle triangle because we're assuming that this lighthouse is built perpendicularly vertically okay so do you agree we've got an angle we know that this side is the adjacent side and we want the opposite side. So if we go Sakatoa, we'll realize that we want the opposite. We've been given the adjacent. So therefore, this tan ratio is the ratio that's got both the things I have and want. So tan of the angle of 5 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is the height all over the adjacent which is 300. So therefore we've got 300 tan of 5 degrees is equal to the height. So 300 tan, let's get out our calculators. So let's do it on the calculator. It says 300 tan, in this case we've got the angle 5 and that equals 26.2 Two, four, two, five meters. So therefore, the height of the building is twenty six comma two five meters, which is pretty high. Pretty impressed. Right. Let's do another example. It says given tan theta equals t over two, where theta is between naught and ninety degrees. Determine the following in terms of t. Okay. So they tell you that theta is between naught and ninety degrees, and because of that you should be thinking of the cast diagram. And the cast diagram goes 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay? And this says that tan theta is t over 2. So what we're saying is that there is an angle between 0 and 90, which is theta. And if we draw a triangle, it says that tan theta equals t over 2. Okay, so that tan theta is opposite over adjacent, therefore that's t and this is 2. 
to get the hypotenuse, what do we need to do? The hypotenuse is, is the square root of the sum of the sides squared. So it's going to be squared, 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4. So this is t squared plus 4. And grade 10s, that is the hard part of this question where it says determine the following in terms of t. The hard part is realizing that as soon as you see this thing yeah, given something is equal to where theta is equal to is between that you need to draw a triangle with on the Cartesian plane and work out the missing sides. Now they've asked us for in terms of t sec theta. Now sec theta is the inverse of cos. So if we've got sec sec is the inverse of cos. So if cos is adjacent of hypotenuse, sec is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse is square root t squared plus 4 all divided by the adjacent of 2 and that's all they want you to write. Now let's look at cot theta. Cot theta is the inverse of tan. So cot is going to be adjacent over opposite. So cot theta is going to be adjacent, which is 2, over t. Nice and easy, right? Now let's look at cos squared theta. Cos squared theta. Cos squared theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, all squared. So the adjacent is 2 over the square root of t squared plus 4, all squared, which is going to be 4 over t squared plus 4, and that's it. We're not going to do anything else. Finally, they want us to do tan squared theta plus 6 squared theta equals what they want to find that out. So let's do it in a different color. Okay. So they want tan squared theta plus 6 squared theta. Now we've already worked out what sec squared sec theta is t squared plus 4 over 2, so that's going to be easy. Tan squared theta, tan squared theta, they gave us tan theta is t over 2. So do you agree it's t over 2 all squared plus the square root of t squared plus 4 all over 2 all squared? So this becomes t squared over 4 plus the square root of square root goes away so you're just left with t squared plus 4 all over the common denominator of 4 so therefore do you agree that when we come and denominate it we've got t squared plus t squared is 2t squared plus 4 and that's it we cannot simplify that any further so now that is how and they love asking these questions grade 10 so please make sure you know how do these questions and realize that if they give you this they're looking for a drawing like that and there are marks allocated to it and that grade 10 brings us to the end of the preparation for your test week please go make sure you can do these questions and then go do the assessments in the turn able system to make sure you're fully prepared have a great day